And so you talked a little bit about some of the frustrations of Western donors, that some of the money that they've pumped in just hasn't been successful. Uh, can it be? You know, are there projects that are working? Because, because as you increase that demand, as you try to get those 25 million children into schools, you will need more schools. You'll need more teachers. You'll need better training for the teachers um, who are currently teaching so that the students are getting the, that better quality education that you're looking for. How can Western donors be a part of that mix? What do they maybe need to do differently to better understand what's going on in Pakistan? I think the simple way of, uh, of putting this, and again, I keep saying simple, you know, these are, short, these are short answers to really deep and complex problems. I don't think any of us have figured out the answers, but I think one thing is pretty certain. You can't make somebody who doesn't want to change, change. Like this, this applies to like human relationships, right? Like parents and children, brothers and sisters, uh, wives and husbands, partners, you know, spouses, you know, siblings. If somebody has decided that they're just going to stay on the path that they're on, then all the money that you put in and all the, you know, all the conversations you invest in, all the coddling that you do, it's not really going to help. Developing countries can benefit, I think, tremendously from international assistance when they themselves have the will to do stuff. When Pakistan decides that it's going to go all in on fixing its education problem, there's going to be a lot of people like DFID, like USAID, like the European Union, like some of Pakistan's other friends that are not considered to be traditional donors by the West, like Turkey and Malaysia and China and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and, and the UAE. All those countries already provide a lot of support to Pakistan. But if Pakistan said, you know what, whether they provide support or not, there's so much political pressure now. There's a political movement in Pakistan for education. Then all this support will become much, much deeper and more meaningful. Without the domestic political will, should donors be putting money into Pakistani education until you get that piece? So if, you know, if I'm completely neutral in this, then I would say, no, I think that donors should get a promise out of the countries they're working in that their investments in those countries will be well used. Um, but I think it's perfectly safe and hopefully for me, but, but for anybody interested in, uh, in development, to actually question donors. Because I think a lot of times donors want to hear that they're looking for somebody to say, yeah, we're interested in reform, without testing what level that interest is. So, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while in, in different sectors, not just education. And I think too, too many times different donors are so keen to go into a country and support whatever part of that country's uh, challenges that they're looking to solve, that that keenness blinds them to the absence of really genuine uh, political will and ownership. Um, what we're trying to do, and I think this is what's different about our project, is that it's not a traditional, typical development intervention. We're trying to fast track or catalyze political will itself so that all the other investment in, in this case, education, but it could be for anything, that that investment actually has long legs. That once do the donor stops providing the funding, the effort that's being made in the country continues apace, largely because the effort is backed up by political will that's domestic.